This video demonstrates question three of sample exam one. You can download the sample exam from Blackboard. Question three attempts to estimate a customer lifetime value with a banking company. So in this data, as you can see at the top, we have the churn rate, retention rate, interest rate, and the borrowing growth rate. The borrowing growth rate so a customer may be borrowing more and more money from the bank, and that increases the bank's profit. So the borrowing growth rate has already been factored in. So the mean profit, as you can see here, from the previous year to the next year is basically the previous year's profit multiplied by 1 plus the borrowing growth rate. So this is already factored in. First, Calculate the retention rate in cell C3. So equals so the retention rate is simply one minus the churn rate. So one minus the churn rate and enter. And then name the cells that contain the values for churn rate, retention rate, interest rate, and borrowing growth rate. So we want to name these numbers. Do select this and formulas create from selection left column click OK double check all the names are created and the next in column D calculate the expected number of customers starting from a base of 100 in year one so first is 100 we know the expected number of customers is the previous year's customer times whatever the retention rate that we have and then enter and then we can just copy this down all the way it's not a problem if the number is less than one because if the bank has 10,000, 100,000, a million customers this number can be multiplied into the total customer base okay so next C using the data provided to calculate the customer's lifetime value in 20 years time window. Okay, so now to do that first we need to figure out the annual profit from this 100 customers equals the mean profit per customer times the number of expected number of customers enter expand this okay and then just double click to copy this down all right and now we want to calculate the clv first we're going to do the clv at the year end equals so to calculate the clv per customer at the year first we want to calculate the clv per customer at the year end equals it's equal to mpv and the first parameter is interest rate so you can type in interest rate once it appears double click and comma and then it's the profit values here for the 20 year time span and I close the parenthesis and this is for a hundred customers and divide by a hundred enter and it's two hundred eighty four dollars and next calculating the CLV at the beginning of the year so we just need to factor in the time value by one year so it's equal to this CLV we have just calculated times one plus the interest rate here okay so that's the CLV at the beginning of the year and part D Use a one-way data table in Excel to demonstrate the influence of interest rate on CLV. So it's already laid out here. The interest rate ranges from 5% to 15% with 1% increments. And then we want to calculate how the CLV would vary at these different interest rates. So first, in this cell, put in the value that we want to use for the data table. That's the CLV at the beginning of the year. Enter. And then select this range. It's important to select the range this way. And then we can go to data. 
uh, what if analysis, data table, and here the column input cell is going to be the interest rate change. So we're going to select the interest rate. This is a one-way data table, so the row input cell stays empty. Click OK. Now we have how the CLV varies with different interest rates. And conditional format this as required. Go to Home, Conditional Formatting, and the Color Scales. Choose this. Now we can see that the CLV is much higher when the interest rate is low and lower when interest rate is high. So the CLV is almost twice as high when the interest rate is 5% versus 15%. So Part E use a two-way data table in Excel to estimate how much churn rate and borrowing rate influence CLV. So churn rate and borrowing rate, how they influence CLV. And now let's roll this a little to see the whole table better. And to do this, again, the data table requires a specific layout. On the top left corner, we're going to put in the CLV we want to use for this data table. And now we're going to select this whole region. And now we go to data, what if analysis, data table. Now we have the two inputs. And the row inputs, in this case, would be the borrowing growth rate that we have put in here. So the borrowing growth rate is here in this cell. So select C5. And the column input cell would be, in this case, the churn rate. And then click OK. And here we go. Now we have the CLV at different churn rate and the borrowing growth rate. And again, conditional format this, go to Home, Conditional Format, Color Skills, and select this. That's uh, beautiful. Now we can see that the CLV is the highest when the borrowing growth rate is the highest at 30%, and also when the churn rate is the lowest at 10%. What's striking here is if the bank can lower the churn rate to 10% and if they can grow the customers faster at 30%, the customer lifetime value per customer is more than $6,000. A huge difference comparing to the baseline of $300, so 20 times the difference. So in this example, I have laid out the interest rate here and churn rate and, and borrowing growth rate here. In the exam, I might ask you to lay out the data table yourself to conduct this calculation. That concludes this video.